Welcome, I'm Pamela Rickia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Dola Dasgupta. Hi Dola! Hi Pam, nice to be on your podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It's so nice to see you. You know, we've been connected online for years, right? And yeah, yeah. I believe we have a mutual friend, Hema, right? That's right. That's yeah. right. Hema is a dear friend of mine. Yes. Mine as well. And she actually did the illustrations for my Unschooling Journey yeah. book. And she has right. some phrases as well. So all of that is to say that I'm very excited about this opportunity to speak with you. Yeah, I'm excited too about this uh, podcast because I've been listening to many of them uh, and have read your blog as well. And uh, there's a lot of reference to your blog and your books. And I have one of your books and uh, to your podcast in a lot of unschooling forums. So I have referred people to it too myself. So yeah, it's really great to be on this. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's going to be lots of fun. So to get us started, can you share with us a bit about you and your family and what's everybody interested in right now? I love getting a little snapshot. Yeah, so uh, we live in Pune, uh, which is a small town, well, turned turned into a big city of uh, a state called Maharashtra, which is uh, the capital of which is Bombay, Mumbai. I think people know Mumbai uh, a lot more. And we moved to uh, Pune from New Delhi about um, 10 years ago. Uh, I was divorced. And uh, so I wanted to make a fresh start. Mm -hmm. So me and my children uh, moved to Pune. My daughter is now 18 and son is going to be 14 next month. And uh, yes, we are uh, exploring a lot of things. Um, my daughter is into a whole lot of things right now. So she's, she's, in, she's kind of training, uh, in piano, in Western vocals, uh, rock and pop. She's in love with everything Korean. So she self-taught herself Korean language. And now she takes a few classes. She's part of a few exchange, uh, clubs, Indo-Korean exchange clubs. She's also taking Japanese classes. And then she, she's basically into uh, multiple things. Uh, music being one of the most important things in life. And, uh, son Ishan, uh, by the way, my daughter's name is Gorika. And uh, we call her Ginny at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're being Bengalis, we always have two names, one for the world, one for home. Ah. And uh, yeah, and uh, Ishan, my son, he is uh, mostly a gamer. Uh, he spends most of his time with his PC. And uh, his favorite is Minecraft still. He's meandered through Overwatch and uh, uh, Fortnite and all the other stuff, but he kind of keeps coming back to Minecraft all the time because the, he's a builder at heart. So, um, and he's into drumming and um, recently he started training in bass guitar and uh, he too is learning Japanese and he's into everything Japanese. So my daughter is into everything Korean and my son is into everything Japanese. And I just want to show you something. Uh, this is his, this is my son's. Yeah. yeah. So that's the samurai sword. Yeah. Samurai sword is going katana. Yeah. I know if you yeah. katana. It's a katana. <laughs> katana. So that's that's how interested he is in everything Japanese. So and uh, uh, all of us love food, so we keep experimenting with cooking different kinds of food. And uh, I am a storyteller, um, so I do a lot of storytelling, and a bunch of other things like holding circles. Uh, where we share and listen uh, on various different topics. Could be parenting, could be feminism, could be uh, poetry, could be uh, just about emotions and feelings, sexuality, a whole lot of uh, things. So these are the things that I we do as a family right now. Wow, that sounds amazing. I love, I love that. And so many little connections came up, right? You mentioned before the call started that you guys were watching a recording of the Grammys that ties right into, yeah. you know, that love of music that I hear with yes. them, the, the Japanese 
the weapons, like my son with the very into martial arts and did, has done a lot of weapons training and stuff. So that's super cool too. And I've seen some videos of your storytelling, which is amazing. So I'm going to, I'm going to share some of those in the show notes. If that's okay. Oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Of course it's okay. It's absolutely fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. oh and by the way, I'm also a big crochet person. So I, well, I, uh, yeah. So I got into crochet about uh, two years back and and then it's like something that I keep doing all the time in between everything else that I do. There's always crochet near my fingers and I just pick them up and start doing. So that's that's another thing that is my passion lately. Do a bit of gardening on my terrace. Uh, mm-hmm. Try to grow things as naturally as possible. Uh, yeah. yeah, so... Yeah. It's so fun. I mean, that's what I love about the snapshot is is just seeing how all these things weave together because all those interests are, you know, respected inside your home and yeah. and they all weave together, right? Like you said, the crochet just picks up, which reminded Lissy recently learned how to crochet. She has been knitting ah. for most of her life yeah, and she's, yeah. creating, she's doing, uh, making a big blanket now. Um, but then yeah, when she yeah, was yeah. home for Christmas... You know, she got Joseph interested in crocheting. So, you know, he's got the stuff too and Ah. and maybe picking it up. It's it's really fun just to have something in your hands. And yeah. 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 And and I love how hearing about other people's um interests and things that are weaving through their lives just um sparks other ideas for other people, right? You can see all the little bits. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah. So how did you discover unschooling and what did your family's move to unschooling look like? Well, um, I think when uh, uh, when we became parents, uh, uh, this, so um, Gorika was adopted and uh, she's my first one. And then uh, we were uh, kind of let like you know what I must say something people always ask me you don't send your children to school how brave are you I said you are brave to <laughs> send your children to school <laughs> I'm not I'm not brave and uh I think uh she went to school uh kindergarten and uh and uh, I think uh it always broke my heart to uh, send her off in the morning and yet at that time I didn't know there were other options and choices but I did always feel that this doesn't seem the right thing to do and uh, I think both uh, 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 their father and I kept questioning for for the next two three years of Gorika's uh, schooling years that uh, this is not what we want. We want something else. So there would be problems with uh, the whole separation anxiety and then uh, the toilet training bit and then um, kind of uh, uh, everything was a preparation for uh, finally going to a big school and fitting in and uh, all about falling in line. And uh, so so we were looking for other options but we didn't know where to look for Mm -hmm. and um, because there were homeschoolers in India but like I didn't know much but I think because we were looking and I always feel that now after you know so many years of unschooling and living on that path of uh, uh, that which we see comes to us kind of faith and trust in that. Uh, now I feel because we were seeking very intently, it came to us. And it came to us in the most uh, magical way. Uh, a friend of their father's uh, 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 knew that, knew a family, uh, sorry, a friend of his actually uh, said, oh, you know what, my sister-in-law homeschools. I said, oh, wow, we are meeting them. And we went all the way to uh, another city to meet these people and uh, they were Christian homeschoolers but I think meeting her gave me that choice that okay 
I can also do this. So I, 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 it was the summer holidays and after the summer holidays, uh, Gorika never went to school. So this was when she was six years old and uh, she was out of school. And uh, we started to, uh, I started to first sit with the curriculum and I felt even this doesn't seem right. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, you know, like, what are we doing for the first time in my life? You know, I went to school myself, but for the first time in my life, because I was looking at it uh, from the outside and not as a student myself or a mm -hmm. teacher myself, I could see the futility of it all. And I felt that, uh, uh, no, yeah. if we are not to send them to school, there is some, there's another way. And when that question came up, I met unschoolers. So I met, uh, yeah, I met Urmila Samson and uh, she, she had grown up kids. And then, and I met Hema Bhardwaj. And it, it was like an instant thing that, yes, this is what I've been looking yes, for all my life. In fact, since I was a kid. <laughs> you know? Right. And uh, yeah, and uh, that's it. And that was like how uh, we launched ourselves into unschooling. And uh, for me, it was uh, very easy. I don't know how, but to just like completely um, give into unschooling was very easy. Not so much for Rajat, their dad. Uh, it it took him many many years to mm -hmm. kind of be at peace with it. He still has his uh, uh, angst and fears around it, but now the kids are kind of able to hold forth for that, and they are they are much more confident in unschooling. So yeah, <laughs> that's how we started on unschooling. Yeah. yeah, that sounds so familiar. Like I didn't know about homeschooling. I had never heard of it when my, at least when my oldest two were in school. So my oldest was nine when I first heard the term homeschooling and started mm -hmm. looking into it. And uh, they were home for March break. And it's, it was like, oh, hey, you know, why don't we give this a try and just, just see what happens, yeah. you know? Um, mm -hmm. and, and so they just didn't go back, but then, yeah, then so quickly you discover unschooling, like when you're looking at the styles yeah. of homeschooling and stuff and yeah. doesn't it just speak to you? Because so often, especially, it, you know, if our kids have been at school and we've been asking all those questions, right. And, and we've yeah. done the journey so far, we just didn't know it was possible as soon as like you said as soon as we heard about it and heard it described um it was like coming home almost right it's like oh yeah. there, there it is yeah 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 granted yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not the end of the journey though right then it's no, learning no. so much about yeah, yeah, unschooling yeah. and how that works in our lives and I think one of the challenges of that de-schooling time can be that navigating of having set goals and expectations yeah. for our children, right? Because yeah. Yeah. that's another piece that, you know, as we get into it, we start to learn to question. And we mm -hmm. play that alongside still staying engaged with them and, and aware of what they're doing and supporting them on their journey as yeah. it unfolds, right? That's kind of a dance, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think the whole... Uh, the since Gorika was six years and Ishan was uh, uh, what six minus four is two yeah so uh, <laughs> so since mm -hmm. then I mean um, uh, I I I understood that unschooling is not homeschooling and I also uh, at that point in time I also felt uh, as I spoke to a lot of people in India. And I was on, on, on the online forums of Sandra and some other people. I kind of felt that uh, there, there, is, uh, there are certain kind of people. Now, I'm not putting it as we are unique or we are something great and we are you yeah. know, awesome. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. But I feel uh, there are certain kind of people who can unschool who take to unschooling much easier than others. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, for me, uh, it was uh, 
it was easier to take this as a exploratory journey like this is an adventure we are exploring i don't know the answers i don't know where we are going with it mm -hmm. and am i willing to put everything uh, on hold and not control and i'm not saying that i the thoughts of controlling would often come up mm -hmm. but uh, every time i let go of that something beautiful happened and uh, so goals like uh, wanting to read and write and learn math and things like that it was it was really hard to uh, not uh, step in and teach them mm -hmm. and to really trust uh, and i have to thank the the moms and dads who were already uh, you know ahead on that journey so it's not that i could do it all by myself but there were examples all the time that i was reading about in other people's unschooling journey uh, where uh, and i was i think i was a, i my was a good student of unschooling <laughs> so i kind of <laughs> so i said okay uh i think i'm a good student so uh, you know and i said yeah i'm going to trust this it's hard because everyone is constantly telling you uh, oh my gosh you know he is 8 uh, years old can't read he is she's 10 years old can't do this i said uh, it's all going to be fine we'll see and uh, so things like that uh, and i mean i am now kind of it's so natural like learning to read and write for both my kids now feels like it's like breathing i mean it's i i don't think i sat and taught them i just supported them so every time uh, every time both my children wanted to type in something on the keyboards and they asked me how to how to spell it i think i every time did that i would tell them okay this is f this is u this is n fun <laughs> you know whatever words they wanted to and uh, that's i don't even know how they learned it actually i don't know what's the process it's it's different for each kid so uh, so that and then about interests so every time the children got interested in something uh, i could i did see that uh, the thought would creep into my head that ah maybe this is what they're going to do for the rest of my life <laughs> yes i can tell people that my son is into this and when i don't and then and then oh after a few days i'm not interested in this anymore <laughs> you know like and so uh, so yeah so my children taught me that hang on let go of these goals and dreams and ambitions let us just enjoy things in the moment and and it's very strange that uh, even though both my kids uh, i mean i did not uh, watch them have a goal or neither did i impose a goal on them but their learning and their interests and their passions have had a kind of thread which kind of meandered and kind of became like a zigzag puzzle and yeah. but there's a thread and it's like it's different for both of them but i clearly see that mm -hmm. and uh, i don't know what's what it is going to lead to but it doesn't matter because uh, the lear learning is not linear out here this is what i've understood that it's it's kind of all over the place but there's a thread connecting everything so <clears throat> so i began to relax uh, many like i think one or two years down the line that uh, this is this is the journey is the goal you know mm -hmm. this this thread whatever the thread is weaving every time that is the goal uh, it it's not going to reach anywhere and maybe it will maybe it will not but we are having fun on the way so yeah That was so beautiful, Dola. I love the way you described it. And, you know, I love hearing that the same kinds of stories from 
all over the world. It's it's a human story, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. so true that you can see the thread connecting so many of the of the choices they've made, the things they've yeah. done, the interests, yeah. the passion. When you look back, right? When you look back, yeah. you can see the thread. Yet yeah. in the moment is where you yeah. trust, right? Because yes. sometimes, yes. maybe even oftentimes, you can't see exactly how they got to where they are in this moment. Right. But trusting that, yeah, trusting that when you look back on it, it's going to, you know, that jigsaw puzzle is going to start to fill in. That's, that's why when people come to unschooling, you know, it's not, I love, we, we say both things, right. It's an adventure. We're going to explore and see how it goes. It's not, this is what we're going to do for the rest of our life. You know, because things can change, choices can change, et cetera. But you need a good chunk of time, right? I I like I like to suggest at least a year. And like you said, a year or two. I would say, you know, two years was solid for me because um you need that time to work through releasing those controlling thoughts and get enough experience that you start to see that thread. That's how your trust builds, right? In being able to trust and live right in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. When you see that thread, it's beautiful, isn't it? I have goosebumps. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No. And you know, what I, what I, what I realized that um, all I had to do was stay engaged. uh, And be present. So, uh, and not judge any of their interests as uh, as of uh, as uh, um, better than the other or higher than the other or lower yeah. than the other or this is more significant of a passion than this is uh, so every interest every passion ha- was looked at as equally significant and equally big and uh, i all i had to do is stay present and uh, value that value that interest value that passion even if it is a curiosity which is uh, which lasts just two days but it's it's something that i wanted to stay present to and i still do that of course when they were younger it was much more uh, now they've learned to stay present to their needs much more so uh, and yet all i feel i'm doing as an unschooler unschooling mom uh, is staying present and engaged to things popping up in their heads, in their hearts, in their world, in their minds. And uh, I'm saying all I do, but it's not really all I do because it's a lot of work. (laughs) 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 It's, I think, uh, I I, I don't remember, I saw this, uh, I I don't know which, yes, I've been, I was watching The Crown on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And at one point, uh, the Queen Mother tells Queen Elizabeth that, uh, you know, the hardest thing to do is not to give your opinion, not to uh, say something when uh, you can, but you choose to stay silent. And it takes so much of strength from within to uh, hold yourself from controlling the situation. And that kind of felt like yes that's what I do mostly <laughs> you know and that's that's being how that's being present to what's going on around me with the kids uh, whether it's their passions interests emotions feelings just being present and it's it's really the crux of unschooling for me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And-, and staying present too you know and staying present at the same time to doubts and fears that come inside me as well you know, yeah, I love present to that too. Yeah, yep. there's, there's that piece, right? Um, because keeping our opinions to ourselves, being present, um, because opinions, when you start looking at it and looking at conversations, you can see how often the things we might say can come across as controlling, even if we aren't meaning yep. them that, right? Because yep. what we're reacting to, like you said before, keeping interests and stuff all having the same amount of significance. Because if we continually react to certain kinds of interests, we are just 
yeah. giving them the message that these are more important things that I believe they're more important things. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it that is such a huge piece. I remember when I had the revelation, I wrote it on the on my blog years ago. It's like, you know, I may have uh, my two cents to share, but so often by not sharing it and keeping my two cents to myself, things went in so many other interesting directions that I couldn't have even dreamed of. Right? Yep. Yeah. And and that's what you gain through the experience as well by giving yeah. this time yeah. and looking back at the thread, trusting that where they're weaving their thread is as right. cool and likely more cool than the direction we might have steered them intentionally yes. or not by sharing yeah. our opinions <laughs> in the moment. Like, yep. and that's not at all about um, not being ourselves, which is what you were going. For, right when yeah. you're saying we yeah. still have our reservations and our thoughts and stuff but it's it's letting them have their moments right when yeah. so often yeah. when they come to talk to us and they share exciting things it's not because they're looking for feedback or directions because they're excited and they want to share with us right yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's yeah. the amazing yeah. piece that's how we yeah. learn so much about yeah. that yeah. right yeah <laughs> so yeah fun. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole the whole excitement of fig, you know finding new things and sharing that, and that that's that's like I'm there, you know. Yeah. Mom, I have something to say. You know, even if it's just a little bit of information about history or geography or some building there or some music group uh, in Korea or uh, you know the back end story or. It's like a wide spectrum of things, and um, they're excited, and uh, and I need to be present to that excitement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because that way they feel seen and they feel heard, and they're excited yes. to move on to the next. Like it's like they're yep. Just yep. checking in emotionally with us and sharing those pieces. And the great thing is too, when we realize that we can do that with them as well. Like when they're yeah. passing by, yeah. we can share, you can show them the crocheting. Yes. Look how much progress I yeah. made last night. Yes, yes absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Yep. It becomes yep. just a whole lifestyle for the whole family. It's not just for the kids. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's really mutual because uh, they're growing up. Uh, seeing the respect and the space that is being given to them and therefore I am watching that they're doing the same not just to me but to a lot of other people who are connected with our lives so there is a there is a difference in the quality of the presence that they offer yeah. and uh, to the world yeah, yeah. It, it is yeah. it is really really noticeable now, another topic that often comes up in unschooling circles that I wanted to touch on with you is the concern around screen time. And you mentioned Nishan is very much into gaming and on his computer a lot. So I would love to hear a bit about your experience with that. Well, yeah. So uh, the thing with screen time is that uh, every... Uh, Every homeschooling gathering that I go to, every meeting that I'm called to, every time parents want to meet me, their biggest concern is the internet and the screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, so so there's this whole fear around it, and that uh, internet and screen is going to offer a lot of dark stuff to your children and they're going to be pulled into it, sucked into it and uh, their minds will get spoiled and things like that. But for me, it's been just a joyous experience because uh, the day I uh, came to know about unschooling and I realized that everything in this world is a resource for joy, fun and learning. I uh, didn't feel that there needs to be a separation from one thing to the other. And uh, uh, also maybe because even though we went to school as children, myself, in our house, uh, in our family, there was not much, there was actually no parental control on watching stuff on television. Mm -hmm. uh, we were uh, uh, pre-cable TV days and we didn't have much shows on TV, but we did watch. 
and uh, I grew up in the Middle East. So uh, we did see a lot of American shows and British so shows and uh, even Indian stuff. Uh, and uh, there was there was never any judgment from my parents on what we watched on television. Mm -hmm. And there was always a certain um, kind of self-regulation that came within us. I don't know how, maybe because we were never told that don't watch this, watch this. So it was always only fun and joyous things that we were watching because uh, television for us was about joy, it was about fun, it was about the family sitting together and watching or me and my sister watching the chat busters and the top 10 and uh, you know. So it was always about joy. So I think I had a different experience growing up as a child. And for me, it was uh, not so difficult to uh, let both my children uh, explored the whole world of uh, internet and television and uh, cinema. Uh, uh, and I myself find the internet so fascinating because there's so much that I've learned and I know about the world. I have so much fun. All my crochet I've learned from the internet. My mother yeah. was, is a you know, my mom is a great crochet person, but I think I never learned from her. I learned from uh, internet maybe because I'm a self learner. I need to I need to learn by myself. So when somebody teaches me, I find it sometimes hard to learn certain things. And <clears throat> I see I've seen my mother now, you know, she's 70 years old and she's been uh, taking care of my dad for a long time before he passed away last year. Uh, she herself found so much from internet, you know, uh, a, a lot of discourses that she listens to, a lot of craft that she has picked up because my mom's always this crafty person and she's mm -hmm. learning new craft all the time. A lot of craft, a lot of self uh, healing uh, herbs and making oils and pastes and stuff mm -hmm. that she wants to do for her hair and for her skin. So uh, I think, uh, and my children, I mean, uh, the whole world has come to them through uh, internet and cinema and television. And uh, a lot of uh, lot of children go from books to cinema. My children have gone from cinema to books. So uh, I remember um, uh, a lot of judgment about, oh, your kids don't read books. You know, they don't read storybooks, they don't read novels. And I have read to them a lot when they were children, a lot I have read to them. But when they outgrew that, they didn't really pick up a book to read. Uh, they read on the internet. They read things which kind of interested them, was of passion to them. And today, uh, my daughter's reading uh, Murakami, which is like, complex stuff mm -hmm. uh, and she has not gone through her gone through the usual uh, you know Nancy Drew and um, uh, you know the usual teenage stuff or light books or she she moved straight into complex books uh, uh, which I found very fascinating and uh, my son, of course, he's completely into the whole fantasy thing. So uh, he's currently reading uh, Tolkien, which also has uh, come because of his love for uh, the film, Lord of the Rings and the mm -hmm. Hobbits. And, and he's a complete Star Wars fan. And I've seen that his interest in Star Wars has, has got him interested in the um, in the universe and the planets and the galaxies and the science of co cosmos and everything. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's like I can go on and on. I know. And on. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy, like uh, how they have been using the uh, internet as a resource uh, to understand and see the world and uh, have fun mm. and learn from it. And I, I don't know what's the fear because I didn't see anything uh, fearful because I think both the kids, both my children <clears throat> were always coming from a place of joy. Mm -hmm. And I always feel when you come from a place of joy, uh, 
everything that comes to you is also joyous. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that's how I saw the internet because I thought, I felt that for them, joy is a big factor and they are exploring everything that gives them joy. So I don't ever see it as a fearful option. And uh, that's what I always tell parents when they ask me about yeah. that. I think so often it's just it's our fear that we're we're bringing to it, right? And I think it might be an interesting piece could be um, about you know when we were talking you were talking about being engaged with them, right? Yeah. And and that without that that engagement, I, I find when we talk about screens too, if we talk to them about them as screens, that is a step of disengagement right there. Right. Yeah. Because like you yeah. said, those are just the resource. Those are just the tools to yeah. find the things. Right. And, yeah. and yeah. you know, it it is an amazing tool because there are just so many things that you can explore, like the whole world. And and you're doing different things when you talk about screens, you're lumping together all sorts of different tools. Right. Yep. From phones yep. to computers to tablets to and, and you're just calling them all screens. So when somebody's asking a question like that, I wonder how engaged they are with their child about what it is yeah. that they're yeah. doing with those yeah. screens. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, yeah. A, yeah. a better question is always, you know, um, my child is interested in this and they're watching a lot of this or they're going to this site a lot. Like, those are more concerns if you want to talk to people mm. about their experiences with particular things things or particular um like uh whether they're websites forums whatever whatever but you know when they're saying screen then it it feels like they're not quite yet they can go a step deeper with their child they're not as engaged with their child to know how their child's using that tool yeah Yeah. right because that's where that's where you can connect with them yeah that's where those come Yeah. live that's what you can be excited about Correct. like you said again not judging interests when they come and they're like mom I'm yeah. having so much fun with Fortnite." yeah you can say yes what are you loving about it right yeah right absolutely and yes and this whole thing about uh taking screen as some kind of a thing that is outside your life mm-hmm. and it's as if your child is going out of life towards this whole thing called yeah, screen, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is like a huge demon or a monster sitting in a cave and your child is visiting it every day. It's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that for us. For us, it's like life. It's, 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 it's not separated from what we do every day. It's not like a thing that you go to to escape from something. It's not something that you go to when you're done doing other things. It's 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 part of the whole soup. Yeah. So when it's part of the whole soup, then uh, we're not going to pick it up like this and uh, no, <laughs> we're actually, you know, we're relishing that bit too because it's part of the ingredient. It's it's the ingredient that's making the soup. So, absolutely right, Pam. Engaging and being present to everything that's in that soup called unschooling, and therefore, screen time is not something that is uh, like a slice of the pie, which you get now and then it is the whole slice it's the whole pizza actually uh so uh, so i find it like screen time too much screen time less but i don't see it as screen time i just see it as what we are doing with our time different things yeah i love that and you know what i love you mentioned at the beginning how much you guys love cooking and food and i love how i love your food metaphors (laughs) (laughs) pizzas and pies it's like that's perfect yeah yeah, yeah. No, that was that was so so well explained. It is. It's just part of just part of our life. It's yeah. not something separate. And I think when you start engaging more with your kids around what they're doing with those tools, yeah. that's when it yeah. becomes more part of your life. You don't see them as yeah. leaving you to go do something right. else. It's just just part Absolutely. part of the soup. I love that. Yeah, so yeah. for me, um, one of the biggest surprises and turns out joys um, of unschooling 
turned out to be having these large swaths of free time, right, at our disposal for us to use. Because when we started, I did not realize how much open-ended time um, would be so well spent by slowing down and being with my kids at their pace, right? I thought, oh, we're going to be doing this. We'll be able to go to this museum and and this and, you know, go to this park and just do a million and one things, right? Because now with school out of the picture, we could do all these other fun things. Um, <coughs> but when we took that time to slow down um, and, and do the things that they were drawn to and do them at their pace, that was another big thing whether it was the time to explore their interests, which may be home-based for a long time, or maybe we go to the museum and we are like in the same room for three hours because they're really into something there, or whether it was just exploring their feelings, having, having a bad day and being able to spend that time with them as they yeah. work their way through yeah. it. That, that was a huge surprise, but it ended up being one of the very important aspects, I think, of our unschooling lives. So I was wondering if that was your experience as well. I'd love to hear a bit more about that. Yeah, so um, I think for the longest time, uh, we were pretty much home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Us too. <laughs> yeah, and, and still, still we do that. So... Uh, uh, for us, uh, home became a place where we explored our relationship with time itself. So I remember reading a book a long time ago. I'm very bad at remembering names of books. I remember the essence of what I read, but not yeah. really. So there was this uh, book in which there was something about, uh, something written about what uh, the author called Einstein time. And I said, okay, what is this Einstein time? And I, I realized, okay, I know about Einstein and relativity and the time is relative. And so what he talked about Einstein time is that when people say time is running out or uh, you're racing against time and time is everything that you got, so don't waste it and the blah, blah, blah. And so this guy said, but you can always tap into Einstein time. And I said, what is that? <laughs> I said, Einstein time is when time stretches for you when you are doing something that you like. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's when we realized that, oh, we have all the time in the world <laughs> because we are only going to be doing and we are doing what we want to do and what we really like. And if that means just curling up on your bed and, you know, just uh, listening to your favorite music or uh, looking at something on uh, on your iPad or on your phone or on the laptop, a movie or, or binge watching, uh, you know, some cartoon or some series, uh, that's fine. I mean, my son, when he was younger, he would spend hours just bathing in the, uh, you know, in the, the rubber uh, pool. Mm -hmm. He would just sit there with his uh, ship and his toys and he'd kind of make up these stories about the pirates and stuff because he was heavily into pirates of the Caribbean at that time. So, And then there were times when the whole house was turned into a museum. Yeah. Every, every table top, every bed top, every couch top was used to display things. And they would just label each section as uh, this is this is for trains and engines this is for aircraft this is for the dinosaurs so and then someday the the whole living room would be uh, a set right out of titanic where they're playing the whole titanic sinking and then they're saving people and uh Sometimes it the all the chairs would be lined up to become uh, aircraft, and they're flying the plane. And so there were, I mean, it's it's countless such uh, days and moments. And even today, I mean, uh, they do go out for they do go for their classes and all, which they have themselves uh, kind of chosen, and they want to go for it and all. But most of the rest of the time, we are mostly at home uh, in our own zones, doing our own things, 
and uh, constantly kind of meeting each other and overlapping each other. And uh, like you said, like, I think with unschooling, I had, I as a mother had so much time at hand, so much more time at hand to start exploring new things for myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I started on a whole new journey when I started unschooling my kids. Like, it's like I became a different person over the years, you know, and I realized that uh, the quality of the presence that I was able to give my children and the presence that they gave me uh, kind of stretched time. It became elastic and we could stretch it as much as we wanted to. And then of course, I mean, not having um, strict schedules of sleeping and eating and all that also freed us up so much more because then we always had, we always could catch up on things that we really love doing and not get bound by these bedtimes and wake up times and meal times and, you know, uh, so I think for us, time became something that uh, we would bend to our uh, advantage rather than us being slaves to time, I think. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I love that description. I love yeah. that phrase, Einstein's yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of lot of parents do ask me, uh, especially uh, the ones who have just started and have taught us it, uh, when do I get me time? I said, see, it's the same thing as screen time because <laughs> me time is not something that you escape to. Uh, you have to... You find me time in the we time because, I mean, I am in the midst of it all and yet I am doing what I want to do. And that is something uh, so fascinating for me in my unschooling journey, you know? Yeah, yeah, no. Everything is, it's just all woven into each other and it's, it's not like I have to pull myself away to have me time for myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. I love, that's what I, I love about, um, about thinking about the time aspect of unschooling, because, you know, like I said, at first I was surprised at how useful, but how valuable, how joyful, just having stretches of time to bend to our will really yeah, right is yeah, yeah. and yeah. and how those days like again you need those you know you need that time that first year or two to really dive in and gain that experience that experience so that you've had the experience of being able to look back at the threads you've had the experience of of just everybody sinking into their flow and coming and going because you know not every day um goes like that go smoothly like yeah, life yeah. happens you know the whole thing well yeah your yeah. life's perfect you know then how are they going to learn you know that things go wrong well because things go wrong <laughs> yeah, right? yeah things yeah. happen in life yeah. and we also flow together through that and we work and help each other and figure yeah. things out together yeah. through all those moments but yeah. that's the beauty of giving yourself a swath of time um yeah yeah, to, to look back on and see how it how it yeah. really works to see how time yeah. actually flows, yeah, and how we flow through it when we don't put yeah. a, a lot of external schedules on top of it, yeah, right that correct, aren't chosen, correct. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So before yeah. our call, when we connected, you mentioned the value of being aware of indoctrination while parenting our kids. So I'd love to hear your thoughts around that. Yeah, well, uh, in the in the you know the last uh, twelve years that I've been in this on various forums in India, homeschooling, unschooling. Well, I've I found it mostly difficult to uh, find a lot of people who are willing to take that jump into unschooling. There's more of homeschoolers here, and <clears throat> but even in, I mean there is a lot of indoctrination happening when you're doing school at home anyway is my is what i feel yeah. uh but uh 
so I'm leaving that out because that's anyway, like a whole new, whole different uh, topic. Even in unschooling sometimes, so in, uh, in relation to uh, India, I'm going to talk about indoctrination because um, I really don't know how it is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here I find a lot of people saying that they're unschooling, but what they really mean is that our children don't go to school. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there, there is still a lot of, uh, I call it indoctrination, not just in religious terms, mm-hmm. but in other ways, like this kind of food is good, this kind of food is bad, uh, this kind of clothing is good, that kind of clothing is bad, um, this uh, living in nature is good and living in cities is bad, or... Uh, yeah. There is there is this judgment of uh, polarizing things mm-hmm. in almost every aspect of living, and uh, you, one needs to only one needs to know, learn to speak one's mother tongue, not just a foreign language. Uh, first, you need to learn what your your mother tongue. Then, so there are so many different types of indoctrination that happens. I have not I have observed that for a long time and and I then really feel that well this too is kind of you're kind of subtly and almost blatantly controlling uh, uh, the minds of your children and not allowing uh, your child to form his or her uh, perspective on things so I find this fascinating in my family because uh, we are pretty much an urban family. We live in a city. I have I have lived in a rural place when I was a kid, but then mostly again in cities. And uh, <clears throat> pretty much aware of climate change and global warming. And I know all that. I talk about it also at home. And uh, but what I find fascinating is that my son, he has a completely different view. So he's like, uh, uh, yes, I know what you're saying. Uh, it is true. The crisis is real. But I have faith in human intelligence. And I know that we're going to find a way out of this. And he's so like, I can keep indoctrinating him and say, no, this is the end and you have to stop this, stop this, stop this. But then I wonder that if I do this, am I actually cutting off a certain intelligence or a possibility that there is another reality? There is another way of looking at things. And maybe, just maybe, these kids are seeing something that we are not seeing. And for me, therefore, to be aware of every indoctrination that I do is very important. It's not that it doesn't come up for me. I want to sometimes say that, you know, of course, it's it's much, it's almost gone now because over the years you learn to de-school, you learn to unschool. And, but I feel that this awareness is so important while unschooling because, uh, it's important in parenting as such, but then we can't do anything about it. I can only talk about unschooling. Is that, are we willing to trust that these kids, if not told that this is better than that, or this is good and this is bad, and this is the way to go and this is not the way to go, if we stop doing this and just let be, things the way they are maybe just maybe they might just figure out a very different reality and possibility and can we trust that can we stay open to that whole field of uh, the unknown and uh, possibilities so for me that's very very vital in my journey as a that that is a great way to describe it I think Um, because Again, back to that kind of line that that we dance, right? So it's not that we give up our beliefs 
and the way we, yeah. our perspective on the world and, yeah. and, yeah. and on humanity and people and, and all those bigger picture things, yeah. it's yeah. not indoctrinating or like passing those on to our kids. Like those are the right yeah. answer, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like in conversations, like you said, we yeah. can share and, and that's that dance. You can tell when you're sh- oversharing or sharing too frequently in that they're starting to mm. feel a pressure from it. Yes, that's your yes. clue in the dance to step back a to little back bit off. You know? yeah. and getting yeah. a little bit yeah. too tight, a little bit too close yeah. there, yeah. holding on too yeah. tight. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, they when when you go to that place, then it becomes more about instead of the topic – it becomes more about needing to resist your parents' um, pressure from that. Yes. You know, even if it, it begins to feel like pressure, and then it's more about escaping the pressure than it is about the yeah. top, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's the other cool thing, watching them over the years, you can see how, over, how their um, thoughts have changed. Yeah. Um, topics yeah. over time yeah. as they gain yes. more experience, like whether or not they actually ever share the same view as yeah. you, but you yeah. can see how they're learning, thinking things through, changing, yeah. tweaking yeah. their opinions, tweaking their thoughts. Yeah. And that's where the trust is that, you know, they are their, their own person in this world. Yeah. And yeah. I more want them to figure out how to find their way through it. Cause you know what? Tomorrow yes. I might not be there to tell them the right exactly. way to think. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's so, hard. So but- for me, it's more about uh, letting their minds and hearts be a fallow in that sense, where seeds that need to grow can grow on their own. I, I know it's 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 so much about the way uh, you know a natural farming is done, where you actually don't interfere much. And you just kind of sit back and observe nature take care of things. And I don't know why we separate ourselves, human beings, from nature, because I feel I'm nature. I feel my children nature. So why are we, why am I separating my children from that plant that I'm nurturing or, you know, in my garden? Because uh, they too are part of that garden and, um, there is an inherent intelligence which I need to trust and not tamper around with it too much. I mean, of course, see, the whole world is throwing views and perspectives and ideas and opinions at them. I know that. I'm not trying to shield them from it either. But that's all I I feel all that is in some ways, uh, the raw material, the ingredients, Mm -hmm. the nutrient, yeah, you know, yeah. The nutrients that they need, that, that the garden that their heart and their mind is, uh, it's all needed and something is going to form. And I, I just want to kind of witness it rather than control it. Yeah, yeah, witness is a great word. And then the other piece is like we we're talking, engaging with them around yeah. it, not yeah. controlling. Because yeah. then if you're, if the other thing you're doing, if you're putting pressure on them coming to your views, what you're also doing is putting a bit of distance there. You're putting a, a bit of a wall because they're not yeah. going to want to come and yeah. share their opinion or yeah. their yeah. thoughts, yeah. their perspective in a yeah. moment yeah. when they know yeah. You're going to push back on it. They they don't want to get into that conversation, right? Yeah. So now you're one less person that they can engage with yeah. as they're working through and figuring stuff out, right? Yeah. Now here is something that I want to add. A lot of people think that it's all hands off, but that's not how it is. Yeah. It's really about engaging. It's it's they're engaging with the world. I'm engaging with the world, and then we are engaging with each other. And we are just engaging with each other and being present to whatever is wanting to happen in that space. So it's not like I'm just kind of relaxed and sleeping and, you know, they're just like, <laughs> no, <laughs> doing whatever. no, it's, it's not like that. It's, no. it's a lot of engagement, mm-hmm. really, you know, watching and observing and uh, responding. I think, uh, the the right word is responding rather than reacting, and that's yes. that's 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 the key word I think. I'm responding yes. to their engagement. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. And that's why that's why it's so important to be <laughs> engaged and in the moment yeah. so that yeah. you can you best have a feel for what's going on. You, yeah. you know them, um, you know what they're interested in, as in you yeah. can engage yeah. with yeah. them where they yeah. are. Um, so you need to be present to yeah. to res- to respond in the way yeah. um, that works for you both in relation. And like you said, like each child is different too. The way you respond is yeah, different. Absolutely. For yeah. Different. Different. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned um, unschooling in India, and I just want to touch on that for a little bit. Yeah. You were involved in creating the first homeschooling conference in India. Yes. Hema mentioned that. Yeah. So how have things yeah. grown since then? Uh, well, um, uh, I think the conference is, uh, it started as a conference and then I think a bunch of people, including me, felt that, why are we calling it a conference? Can we calling it a gathering? Or a yeah, 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 that happens you know, so often. Like, yeah, so <laughs> then it kind of changed over a few years to a meet and uh, it's, it's, it's been, uh, I have not been so actively involved in it uh, I was involved the first three years. Then I took a step back because I realized the the need is so much more for homeschooling than unschooling. And um, it kind of was not resonating with what I needed and what I could give. And so I, I kind of slowly stepped out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Um, so, so, the, so the gathering still happens every year. And... Uh, but... My work is completely focused on unschooling. So uh, I just took it all to another platform and uh, uh, wherever I get a chance, I talk about unschooling. My email is out there on in the public domain. I have a Facebook uh, page, a Facebook group where we talk purely about unschooling. And uh, uh, I go to the conf- uh, the gathering when I feel like going and I make it very clear that I'm going to talk about unschooling. <laughs> so, uh, so, so those who feel called, they come and we talk about it. We explore it together. It's, I would say uh, rather than the first homeschooling conference, I would say the whole uh, exponential increase in interest in people uh, to explore uh, learning without school. Yeah. So whether it is homeschooling or um, unschooling, uh, numbers have definitely grown over the last 10, 12 years. And there are a lot more people wanting to explore uh, uh, growing, uh, raising children without school. And yeah, how they do it is different for everyone, but that's a... That's a large, uh, significant change is what I see. And it's not like uh, uh, a shocker to people and, uh, when you say, oh, you know, they don't go to school. I said, ah, oh, yeah, I read about it. It was there in one of the newspapers. So it's, it's, it's kind of in the con- public collective consciousness now. But then India is such a diverse country with uh, a whole a sec- segment of uh, this country uh, feels getting a school education is their pathway to employment and jobs. So, uh, so uh, I don't really advocate for it in India. They're saying that this is the way to educate your children or this is the way. I don't do that because there is uh, a whole uh, large segment of the society, of the culture, of the population for whom a school is uh, their only way to uh, aspire for a better life. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, and that I have never I've never really kind of taken to the term advocate. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's only about knowing there's a choice. Yes. Like you said earlier, it's not for all families. It's not no. for all parents. I mean, no. if parents want to do it, I think it can work for all kids, yeah. just because the point of unschooling is to work with your kids, <laughs> you know, yeah. and help yeah. them accomplish whatever it is that yeah. they're wanting to accomplish. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lifestyle for the parents who want to live that lifestyle yeah. for their family. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I yeah. don't ever like to think of it as telling, I like, 
you know, if people ask to let them know the possibilities exist, like, yeah, like yeah. the first time I came across the word homeschooling and yeah. went, what the heck is that? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah, the piece. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. If, if they're curious and they want to learn more, I love to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I I consciously stay away from getting getting into this whole uh, discussion and debate on uh, school versus no school because yeah. That's not what I. That's not why I am doing this. Uh, it, it's a. It's a lifestyle choice for me. It's like, it's like, uh, uh, like anything else. Like making a choice where I want to live. Making a choice about what food I want to eat. Making a choice about uh, the skincare product that I'm going to use or how I want my hairstyle or so. Uh, who am I going to marry? What kind of relationships I'm going to have? So, these are. Uh, for me, very core choices, and yeah. it really has nothing to do with uh, an ideology or some kind of uh, uh, something that I want to indoctrinate people with. That's it. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> I just wrote an answer this morning to someone, you yeah. know, saying yeah, yeah. I did not come to you know choosing unschooling through any political viewpoint because that was kind of a slant yeah. of yeah. the question. Yeah. It wasn't. In, Correct. theology that I was trying to purport it yeah. was what kind of parent do I want to be yeah. you know what yeah. kind of yeah. family do I want to create yes yes right yes. that that's what led me there versus yeah any yeah. kind of outside indoctrination yeah, yeah. Correct. <laughs> correct 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 so what is your favorite thing about your unschooling days right now Ha, ah, the favorite thing right now is that uh, my children are far more independent than they were at one time. <laughs> so uh, they're, they're able to make their own snacks. Uh, they can uh, take care of their meals at times. And uh, they're pretty much, uh, especially my older one is uh, moving around on her own i don't have to do the picking and dropping and driving them around so that gives me a lot more uh time for myself so that's that's something that is uh, good for me but what is really interesting about uh, where we are as a family right now is uh watching my daughter because she's she turned 18 uh in november and uh she's just like you know, wanting to explore so much. And she's, uh, she's like really pushing herself there and, and uh, trying out different things, going out there, connecting with people. And this is, this is uh, from someone who f for the longest time uh, felt she was shy and that she was, uh, sh that she had social anxiety and that uh, meeting people was difficult for her. First, to, to watch someone like her, like that, to be really, you know, exploring, being out there and being on several uh, social network groups and things like that. And uh, even, you know, doing all the inquiries that she needs to do for her own, for the courses that she needs to take. So I think to see that is fascinating for me because. <clears throat> I think what really mattered was that I was present and she was also present to herself and I was present to her in whatever phase that she went through mm -hmm. uh, without wanting to turn the tables or what, without wanting to make it different or it's just accepting that that's how it was. Now it's this way and we don't know what it will be next. So I think for me to watch my daughter really like, you know, spreading herself out there is something fascinating for me. And, and my son, um, you know, finding that, when he uh, likes something a lot, how he uh, finds the time for it, like the the, the discipline that he he's uh, 
instilling in himself to to watch that is fascinating and uh, i mean he and there is so much more uh, what what fascinates me about my son now is that he stands there in his power and said no mom i don't think you're right <laughs> but, and he so calmly explains uh, his point of view uh, sometimes when i am losing it but he is not like he is like talking like as if he is on some diplomatic mission <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of diplomacy a lot of calm so that kind of really fascinates me and uh, yeah i think the it was a different thing when they were younger and now that they are all kind of growing up it's 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 a completely different journey because we are emotionally also on a different uh, level of connecting yeah yes. uh, you know yeah. even with my daughter because she's she's like 18 and she's exploring so many things her emotions and relationships i find it so much fast so much so much more fascinating because i am talking to her uh like another woman and mm-hmm. that's that's really fascinating for me that uh we are, uh, yes yeah. there is the mother and daughter but there's also this you know thing about a younger woman and an older woman and <laughs> we are kind of <laughs> bonding and about stuff and that's like <laughs> interesting yeah yeah i love they're they're just fascinating as people as human beings yeah right yeah. our kids yeah. i love that word fascinating because it's so true it's just so curious and interesting to see you know what they're the choices that they're making in their lives and how valuable it is to let them go at their own pace like you talked about their own phases rather than us worrying or trying to put some sort of timetable on it they get the places they want to go when they get there right and and it's always valuable to them where they are they're there for their own reasons right so it's just yeah so fun to see how they blossom and in what directions right yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and yeah. i love that other piece that you talked about the difference as they get older you know, cuz when yeah. they're younger it's a lot more about like um, doing things it's a, a, a lot more hands on i think you yeah. know yeah. a lot more yeah. Yeah. um getting them places doing things yeah. hearing yeah. facts you know, yeah. looking things yeah. up, you know, it's a lot of that. Whereas they get older, there is an, yeah. a much more emotional aspect. Now they're more exploring yes. the kind of person they want to be because yeah. they already yeah. know how to learn and figure out the things they yes. want to learn, yes. right? The facts, yeah. Yeah. they've yeah. kind of taken over. So now our conversations start to morph yeah. into more philosophical takes, emotional takes, yes. you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. That's true. That's how it is for us too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Bola, thank you so much for taking the time yeah. to speak with me. It was so much fun. I really appreciate. Thanks. It. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was fun for me too. Real yeah. fun. Yeah. So yeah. before we go, can you let people know where they can connect with you online? Yeah. So uh, I have an email ID. which is uh, dola dg at gmail at the rate gmail dot com i have a facebook page which is uh, my timeline which is dola das gupta and uh, i moderate a, a facebook group which is called unschooling in india share ask reflect excellent so, yeah so i will put links to that in the show notes if anybody yeah, would like to yeah. connect with her yeah. and thanks again have a wonderful evening say hi to the kids for thank me. you Yes, I will. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.